Okay. We're looking here at the uh, level 10. When you have logs, you simply think of the multiply sign as being represented by a plus in here, so that plus equals multiply. If you have a minus, it's divide. So all you have to do is say 10 multiplied by 4, 14 rather, is 140. If it was a minus sign, you'd just think of it as being a division. Now when you look at fractions like this, n over 14, that really is n in the numerator and 14 in the denominator. And over here, of course, you just have 6 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. With that sort of situation, you can do what we call cross-multiplying. So if you have a over b equals c over d, you can cross-multiply. You can say a times d equals b times c. What you're really doing in this case is multiplying each side by 14. So you would just say n equals 6 times 14. And if you want to work those things out quickly, you can, you can think of, uh, of uh, 12 times 6 and add on 2 more 6 is another 12. With these sort of calculations, they're getting a little bit more complicated now because now they have a certain number of x's and y's and you have to carry a few more figures in your head. Now these are the sorts of ones you might want to pass over quickly by doing a zero, but the correct way to do it is to look at your negative 3x, then go over and look at x and see it's 5, and keep that negative 3x in your mind and think, well, that's got us down to negative 15. Now you keep the negative 15 in your mind, you go back and look at the 5y, and you think, oh, yeah, 5y is, is 15. OK, well, good, that brings us back to 0. And then you add on your z. When you have these sort of examples, all you have to look at is first where is the question mark? The question mark is on the numbers. So you only have to look at the 3 here and the 9. 9 threes are 27. You can completely ignore the A's. They've done that for you. 9 twos are 18. They've done it for you. You don't have to look at that. Just look at the question mark, see where it is, and therefore look at the corresponding figure there inside the brackets and the one outside, and just remember 9 times 3 and the question mark is 27. Now, when you get a, a situation like this, these are called quadratics, what you have to remember is the mnemonic FOIL, F-O-I-L, which stands for firsts, outers, inners and lasts. And the way we get the result over here is to multiply the firsts, which are y times y gives you y squared, and then we combine together the outers and the inners. The outers give you 7y, the inners give you 4y, so that's why we've got 11y there. But we don't have to go through any of those calculations to answer this question, because the final term comes from the lasts, which will just simply be 4 times 7, 28. So look where the question mark is. If the question mark is at the end, all you've got to do is look at the lasts. If it was in here, you'd look at the first. If it is in the middle, then you have to add together the first and the last, and be careful if there's any negative signs. You need to take away those products. When it's squared, you've just got to imagine this as being x minus question mark in brackets multiplied by x minus question mark in brackets. So again, we're looking at the lasts. And so the question mark squared will give you the 64. So Memorise your squares, you know your squares up to your 12 times table, but it's also useful to remember a few more. The square of 13, 169, the square of 14, 196, the square of 15, 225. Those ones might come in. So with these sort of ones, you're going to see a squared number here, and you've just got to get the square root 8, and that's your answer. It can be done very quickly. When you have these questions about cubes with surface areas, of however many metres it might be, you need to divide that by 6 and then you need to take the square root because there are 6 sides that gets you down to the area of one side and the area of one side is of course the square of the actual side that you have to find. Now, you don't have to go through very lengthy calculations. You can look fairly quickly at this 294 and 
you can see that it's approximately 300 and a sixth of that is approximately 50 and of course then you think well 49 is the square of 7 which is just under 50 this is obviously 7 you'll get other things like 150 a sixth of that um, it's, it gives you the, uh, the 25 which is 5 squared when you're talking about probabilities you have to think of the percentage as being 75 over 100 what would that come down to in terms of a number over 8 well 75 is 3 quarters and 6 is 3 quarters of 8 in this case it's pretty straightforward when you have a percentage and you have to work out a percentage of a number it says like 75 percent of 60 you're multiplying there you, you would take six times 75 and divide by 100 but again if you know your common percentages it's often easier just to take in this case three quarters of a number well those are the sort of things you get in level 10 now you may want to um, make use of our software I've developed software for both primary and high school you can buy that on eBay if you look up um, Osbarg, O-Z-B-A-R-G do an advanced search and look for the seller Osbarg, O-Z-B-A-R-G and you can buy the high school or the primary school software quite cheaply um, well under twenty dollars each and you can use that for the rest of your high school in particular it's a good idea to get ahead there so thank you for listening hopefully that's been some help for you there and by the way, these scores that you've been seeing down the right here, they have all been done by my young son, who's still eight, nearly nine, but he's done those sort of scores, 24 on level 10, 23, 23 on nine and eight. And you can see the scores there. He's got the best in his school, even though he's still in grade four. He's beaten people two years ahead of him.